It's been four months since I did my animal human video and that video reached more than half of a million views, which is amazing. And in that video, I really thought that the series was over. However, the mangaka on Twitter, yeah, I still say Twitter, revealed that he dropped a second volume to the series back in October. So obviously, I had to dig deep into the internet and find the files just for you guys. Because even to this day, there is still no official English translation or even a fan translation of Animal Human. So I translated it for you guys. And today, we're going to go over the entire second volume of the series and hope that it's actually better than the first one. But if you guys want to see more anime content like this one, then why not go down and hit that subscribe button. Also, starting right now, we are hosting a massive voting poll with the Google form in the description below. Vote for whatever horror media content that you guys want me to cover. And that means any anime, any manga, movie, comic, analog horror, TV show, SCP, no sleep Reddit post anything anything related to horror that you guys want me to cover all you got to do is go to the google form and vote for it the winner will be announced on january 1st on new year's so get to voting guys but without further ado let's get on with the video the scene opens with a shocking chilling image of a naked man hanging from shackles surrounded by hungry, anthropomorphic animals. As the human is lowered, the animal swarms and devours him alive. The frame cuts abruptly to a promotional ad video featuring the head chef of Ann Pacheta Takanagi. He welcomes viewers describing the exceptional quality of animal-human meat served at the restaurant. This meat, he explains, is a rare delicacy among humans, perfected by the chefs listening to their ingredients. Knowing every detail of how the animal lived, what they felt, and how they were raised is like seasoning the meat with a hundred different spices. The video promises an unparalleled dining experience. At Ann Pacheta, everything is at its very best. The meat, the staff, and the clientele. The video ends as a man arrives at the restaurant. Inside, well-dressed patrons are seated. Takanagi enters, welcoming them to Ann Pacheta and announcing a special, one-of-a-kind, full-course meal. A staff member rolls out a trolley carrying a gourmet dish, an entire goat animal-human, exquisitely prepared. The crowd erupts in applause, however, Taganashi prepared just one more surprise for the guest. The goat, though dismembered and cooked, remains alive, connected by transfusion tubes and an artificial heart, a cutting-edge treatment ensuring that the meat remains fresh at all times. As Takanagi describes each dish, soup made from the goat's spine, bread infused with its organ meat, edible flowers crafted from its arms, the goat, still conscious, questions its reality. The diners, fascinated, gathered around to ask the goat questions. What did it eat? How was it raised? What exercise did it do? The goat, overwhelmed, can barely respond before Takanagi injects its artificial heart with alcohol, leaving it disorientated. He then thanks the goat, cutting out its tongue and pouring its blood into a glass, presenting it to the guest as they cheer and applaud. Later, as the guest and staff depart, Taganagi is alone in the kitchen. He receives a visit from a boar who requests a special meal for an upcoming dinner party in front of a government minister. The minister has a unique palate though, and deserves not farmed animal human meat, but natural produced human meat. The next day, Taganagi drives with his son who asks him to attend his upcoming game. Taganagi agrees, promising a family vacation once his current job is done. However, the boar's request weighs heavily on his mind. The following morning, Taganagi gathers his staff for a meeting. Once everyone is present, the doors are locked and the sleeping gas fills the room. The scene transitions into the dining hall, where animal humans dressed in former attire are seated as Taganaki unveils a special dish, a massive meat cake crafted from the flesh of the staff, with limbs as decorations and topped with a blended brain sauce of all of the brains of the staff. The diners, excited and cheerful, begin to dig in. Taganaki approaches the minister for feedback, but the minister mocks the dish, 
calling it a party meal where the main course managed to escape. In rage, Takanagi argues, but the minister rings a bell, signaling the entrance of the boar and Takanagi's son. Takanagi screams at them not to touch their son, but is then restrained by two animal humans. Takanagi watches in horror as the diners turn on his son, devouring him alive. Takanagi collapses, vowing to kill every single one of them, but the boar walks behind them and commends his cooking skills. That night, the minister and the boar discuss the evening's events by the sea. The minister assures the boar that their superiors have nothing to worry about. Humans are merely humans after all. The next chapter begins with a baby otter being accepted for shipment. Other baby animal humans cheered on, congratulating it on being chosen for a delicious purpose. However, once in the back room, a fox dismisses the otter and kicks it into a grinder, calling it low quality meat due to his inability to gain weight. From birth, animal humans are raised with the knowledge that they are destined to be meat. They live stress-free lives, receive good education, and are fed carefully to enhance their sweetness and flavor. Farms specialize in different rearing methods but share the same ultimate goal, producing high quality food. In a cafeteria, a dog is eating when a piece of food lands on his cheek. The dog calls out to the animal eating next to him, Chica, the little girl from volume 1. The dog orders her to apologize but Chica just continues on eating. A llama calls out to the dog when he notices blood dripping from its face and panics, suspecting an illness. The room descends into chaos as animals run with fear. Over the intercom though, a staff member calms them down and says that a staff member will guide them to their rooms. The animals calm down, but Chica never left its place as she just kept on eating. The animals are brought to the playground and one of the animals realizes that there's a man on the roof with a megaphone. The man reassures them that only one animal was sick, but measures must be taken. Moments later, a massive rock slide buries the animals alive. In reality though, the animals were just in a hole and workers were dumping piles of rock and dirt on top of them, filling the hole. Unbeknownst to the farm though, later that night, two workers, a bull and a human, secretly kidnapped five animals that were supposed to be buried, including Chica intending to eat them to avoid them being just wasted meat. One by one, the bull decapitates the animals until it reaches Chica. As the axe falls and Chica is beheaded, she wakes up, confused. In the next room, there's bloody footprints leading to the door that Chica's in and the two workers are laying dead on the ground. Chica goes outside and sees an opening in the fence proclaiming that she's hungry. We cut to a couple walking in the middle of the woods, waiting to be rescued by anyone, until the man finds a trail and a child at the end of it. The kid asks if they're lost, and the man excitedly asks if he lives anywhere nearby. The kid replied that he does, they just have to follow him, as he has a knife hiding behind his back. Chica ventures into the forest, scavenging for food. She encounters a wounded wolf and calmly waits for it to die before eating it. However, the meal isn't enough. She stumbles upon a house but is caught in a trap. A cow comes out of the house and rescues her, feeds her, and offers her shelter. The cow asks Chica where she was from and Chica replied, a place where there's a ton of animals. The cow knows that she's talking about the farm and comforts her, but staring at them from the window is the child. The child grabs a knife and walks over to the husband, cutting him up and feeding it to his mother locked in a cell in the basement. As she rests, the cow thinks it's a good night to have something to drink. He walks into a room with multiple women hanging from the roof, topless and with bite marks on their breast. The cow walks up to a woman who was just brought in this morning and begins to drink some milk. The next morning, Chica smells something funny and discovers a basement where the monstrous bear dressed like a mother is locked in a cage. Chica reaches her hand out, but the bear bites off her arm and then drags her into the cell to devour her. The cow walks into Chica's bedroom to find her gone. The cow goes to the child and beats him, demanding to know where he hid Chica. The child, calling the cow father, doesn't know anything. They find Chica's blood in the basement, but the cow collapses in despair that that was his only source of animal human milk. 
The cow reveals that he brought the boy into the family, introducing the mother bear as his mother and the cow as his father with other human siblings. The mother bear tried to attack the child, but the cow told the child that they loved him so much that they want to eat him. The cow wanted the bear to be a source of milk, but without human flesh, the bear became rotten and broken. So they had the siblings gather human meat to feed her, including the siblings themselves. The cow wanted to age the boy with love so he can grow up and have a better flavor. However, the cow was done waiting. Suddenly, the mother bear begins to scream and something was clawing itself out of her stomach. Chica breaks free from the bear's stomach. As she crawls towards the cow, her arm begins to regenerate. The cow worships her as a goddess and tries to taste her milk, but then the son stabs him with a spear, causing a lantern to fall and causing a small fire. The cow turned around and tried to choke out the child, but suddenly the bear lunges and devours the cow before succumbing to the flames engulfing the house. Chica and the child escaped. The child asked Chica, why did you help me? Chica replied that he wouldn't taste good if he was burnt. The child asks if she wants to eat him, and Chica simply replies, yes. The scene shifts to an orangutan playing golf, surrounded by cheering businessmen. One of his assistants approaches him with a chart of the progress of the farms, noting that they have lost a lot of meat due to diseases and cannibalism. If they don't fix this problem, the world's food supply will, before he could finish his sentence, the orangutan missed his shot and blamed it on the man for stressing him out. So, the orangutan asks him for his ball. The man looks at him and rips off his eyeball for the orangutan to use as a golf ball. The orangutan says to fix the problem, they must continue the development of regenerative bodies. The volume ends at a lab holding normal animals like sloths and cats, but in one of their test tubes holds the head of Anist. The sequel was a little mixed for me. However, I did really enjoy the overall story. I didn't think Animal Human would get a sequel with the way it ended in the first volume, but it did a pretty good job as a continuation. It explored more of the world building, how things operate. While it wasn't super detailed, we still had enough context clues to really tell how the world really works. For example, one of the things I didn't really mention is that there's humans who have never seen animal humans before, even though it seems that there are a lot of human workers and assistants and even rich folk that know of their existence. We also see how there's just one powerful owner of all of the farms, which is the orangutan. As we see from the last volume, he also owns the farm that Chica was made in. But there are also other powerful political figures that are animal humans. Also, if the orangutan started this whole operation, then where do the scientists that created the animal humans come into this situation? How did this animal human gain so much power to just start his own operation? We only know bits and pieces here and there, and it's one of the main reasons I keep coming back to the story. It was the thing that kept me still on this series. The restaurant scene, while looking a bit pointless in the second half of the story, it really is interesting when trying to learn more about this world. I think having an anthology series based off this world would be really entertaining and it actually feels pretty natural with the amount of stories you could really tell in this overall world. I really like that they kept following Chica. I didn't they didn't really have to, but it was really nice to see different callbacks to the first volume. I did wish we spent a little bit more time on the farm, maybe adding an extra arc where Chica tries to escape, but honestly thinking more on that idea, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Plus, they really executed this farm scene really really well. The cow and the bear arc was pretty cool. I wasn't that big of a fan, but it definitely gave us some really creepy imagery, some crazy gore, and a very interesting view of love, especially with Chica and the child. We know Chica doesn't remember anything from when she was a human, and now we see that she's following the same protocols that she was learned from the farm. We saw that when she was handling the wolf, she didn't want the wolf to be really scared, she wanted it to be calm so the meat would taste better, and she said the same thing with the child. The child only knows love 
if they want to eat them. That's the reason why he wants to follow Chica now, and that's why Chica wants him around, so he can live stress-free, so the flavors of his skin feel great to eat. All of that stuff is really, really interesting, and I want more of that explored. But the stuff I did not like was the whole starving anonymous route of having a regenerator failure program. But there just happens to be one really successful regenerator that escapes the government's hand. I thought it kind of sucked that they're going that route. I think it's just because I read Starving Anonymous first. So all I could think about when reading this part was that, oh, they're going the Starving Anonymous route. To me, it makes a lot more sense when having a meat factory meant to only feed these gigantic alien beasts to have a regenerator just due to their massive size and the amount of food that they need. But for the animal human world, it doesn't feel needed just because of the large amount of food that they technically already have. However, even though I didn't feel like they needed it, they did a really good job at explaining why they need the regenerators, why they have to go this route. This isn't the last time we'll see Chica and the child. Hopefully we get a lot more answers shown in volume three, but for now I'm actually pretty satisfied with Animal Human Part 2. But thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to go down in the description and vote on what horror content you want me to review. And also remember to join the Discord server. If you like more horror manga videos like this one, then why not scroll down and hit that subscribe button. But I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.